Can't somebody just say we want to stop capitalism? I mean, it's like not enough to do these little reforms. Yeah. I mean, the one big demand that I heard out of the Occupy Wall Street demand committee, they may have changed, but I was hearing this report on the radio, and, and they said, well, the one thing we can all agree on is full employment. It's like, you don't get capitalism in the slightest, do you? You cannot have full employment under capitalism. <laughs> capitalism. It's not how it, how it, how it works. Mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, that is just such milk toast. I can't even believe it. Just have complete ignorance about what they're up against. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's got to pull the other way. We can't yeah. pull to the center. It's got to pull to the more radical edge. Or edge, or edge. This yeah. is going to help. Um, for those of us who have a right to vote, what good does it do to vote uh, when it doesn't even seem to count? Mm -hmm. uh, what can be done to change this, and so our vote can actually count? Okay, well, uh, one good thing would be to read the constitutions of places like Switzerland and Sweden, which I think are great models, because their constitutions locate power on the local level, and then it's basically confederated across the whole country. That was written out of the U.S. Con US, con US Constitution on purpose, 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 because they did not want power at the local level. So we've got states, which are still really big, and then we've got the federal government on top of that. Um, we can we could be doing this completely different. And if we actually had some power on the local level, your vote would count, in fact. You could yes. actually work this out with your neighbors for years, for years, for years, and Vermont still runs by town meeting, so you get together with your neighbors and you talk. Where I lived in Massachusetts, we still had town meeting as well, and Helen, you know, so the first Tuesday of every February, whatever, you got together, you got together, you got together, town meeting, and it's really boring decisions like, you know, the parking meters or whatever, <laughs> but that's the stuff that you're dealing with. Right. Um, Vermont has a very strong secession movement, and that's the second Vermont Republic. They've got to newspaper, newspaper, newspapers and a radio station and they are introducing the idea of Vermont secession into e almost every town meeting now. They're bringing it up as let's vote for secession. It's in their, it's in actually in their state constitution. When they, when they joined the United States, they said, and we can leave if we don't, if we don't, if we don't, if we like this. And, um, 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 and they had people come from Canada and they said, so if we vote for this, what's Canada going to do? And the guy from Canada was like, we believe in international law. If the people of Vermont vote, this is what they want. We will recognize you as a nation, and we will accept your passports. And it was like this is beyond that's cool. That's and, and that's just the thing about Vermont is that they have an identity as people who live in Vermont, which I think may be stronger than their than their identity as U.S. citizens for a lot of them. But they still run their affairs on the local level. That it was never destroyed in Vermont the way it was everywhere else. So they know how to make democratic decisions, you know, with the people, the people, the people, the people that they live with. And that is a lot to build on. Most of us don't have that living experience. They do. And they, they mean business. So uh, that's another model I really want people to look into because they're doing it. Okay, this isn't just pie in the sky. There are people all across the planet who actually know how to do this. Um, voting makes me think of a few, few things. It's, it's one of which is puking, another which is probably <laughs> masturbation. <laughs> um, but don't want to put those together, frankly. Yeah. Um, except gets. when you vote. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, there's there's something I was thinking about with the third party thing that I wanted to mention, which is that um, when I lived in Spokane, a uh, person who was a state representative came to uh, ask a whole bunch of people that she knew peripherally um, if she should run for state senate. And I was one of the people that she asked. We went out to dinner and then we talked about it. And, and her politics were really good. And one of the things I said, this is like 15 years ago, one of the things I said to her is, you know, you, you have a really good heart and your politics are great and if something happens along the way, I'm going to follow your career and if something happens along the way, I'll know that the system is com is even more irredeemable than we think because um, because you're a good person. If you vote for bad things when you're in the state senate office as a as in in Washington, Washington that something bad something bad something bad has happened, and I, she's actually um, she's done some bad things and uh, has voted against the environment. Environment. I know activists in spoke 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 can who were very disappointed that the system itself is. It's, I don't even want to say corruption because that's how it works, but the system itself itself is. Itself is is well. What I can say is that there was a, there, there 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 was a person who was ext an extremely good person with a good heart, um, who won't even take phone calls from someone who is attempting to get rights of nature and rights rights to organize in Spokane.
when you return the phone call, phone call, phone call. So that's one thing that happens with that system. Um, and the other thing, voting. Um, yeah, I believe I actually believe in voting on the local level, especially where I live, because the, because the, because the the um, the right wing people are so crazy here that it's like it, locally I actually will do the lesser 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 two people just like anybody but um, these really 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 insane on a larger scale it's pretty interesting I think that that um, Obama did a really really smart thing by putting off the Keystone decision Keystone pipeline decision because there were I think a lot of people in 2000 they said okay no more the more the more this is gonna be the last time we've offered the lesser two evils and Bush was so terrible like 2004 they're like okay this is really the last time and then 2008 was like okay seriously this is the last time and now what he's done I mean Obama has been just such a disaster that um, I think I think I think that by delaying the Keystone pipeline decision he can now say okay 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 you environmentalists look if you don't vote for me this is game over for the planet as James Hansen says so I think that he found something that he could uh, find a way to hook people back in and once he gets in he's gonna do the same crap he's been doing he's just gonna be I mean he's 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 actually in many ways been worse environmentally than Bush one Bush was I know hurt that's wow. hard to say <laughs> 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 But the same thing happened with, with oh, that's another thing I was going to say about the whole the whole um, Constitution thing is that I think there was something, I mean, the, the, those in power, like the, the recent, re, the last few days, the Senate, the Senate, the Senate passed a law about, um, um, or the Senate passed a bill about um, the detainees how, one? Yeah, the detainees. Yeah. That, that yeah. United States citizens can be detained on United States soil <laughs> indefinitely without, without trial. Without trial. Yeah. And one of the lines that somebody said about this is this is true for anyone who would want to subvert the, subvert the sovereignty of the United States. And it's like, hey, that's pretty cool because what that means is everybody who voted for NAFTA should be detained indefinitely. You know, because that's one of the things that kills me about all this stuff is it's all just lies because seriously, all the all the right wing people who freak out, who freak out about the UN, you know, the UN's gonna take over. I'm sure you saw the sign on the way down. Uh, 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 if you don't, you'll see on the way back you go up one ninety nine. There's somebody who has a big, a big sign, US US out of United Nations. Um I a, I I that. That. <laughs> Yeah, well you'll see it. Yeah. After, I mean Gat and NAFTA, all that stuff, that's all that's all subverting the U.S. sovereignty, and I mean, from a, and I'm not a patriot, but from a patriotic, patriotic, patriotic perspective, all those people should be put up, put up against the wall. I mean, the, the why aren't the Tea Party? Well, because they're puppets of the rich. But, but a, this is why I could talk to that friend of my friend of mine today, who's really right wing, is because he totally agrees with this. He thinks that that NAFTA was a subversion of the U.S. Constitution. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Sorry, it was just the last question here. Also, I would question the use of the word world, world, world. We don't want to dismantle the world. That's what capitalism is doing. Right, that's already been. We actually want to dismantle, want to dismantle, want to dismantle capitalism yeah. to start to dismantle civilization. But could we change it for that? Then. Can I say the right. question again? It was um, I'll replace world with capitalism. Got it. Uh, <laughs> so you I, want to get trying that? I think I think I think that, well I think that that's basically just above ground and below ground. That's the same as any resistance movement whatsoever. That. You know, only two percent of the IRA ever picked up weapons. Ninety-eight percent was doing very support work, which included feeding people. Um, Kropotkin said, he said it better than this, but basically he said a lot of revolutions have failed because of bread. That if you can, you can, you can. So what we need is we need to be to be relocalizing. We need to have, have, have relocalizing food supplies, relocalizing education, um, relocalizing. Um, Decision making. Decision making. I that local democracy. Yeah. 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 So that, and and we need to be re mythologizing, mm -hmm. telling other stories. And one of the things I say all the time that it just pisses me off is what are the movies on the waterfront, Straw Dog, Dog Dogs, V for Vendetta, uh, give me a couple more. Um, Saturday Night Dr. Zhivago. All of them. Saturday Night Fear. What do they all have in common? Blade Runner. Blade Runner. What they all have in common is they all have the standard pornographic rape fantasy at some point, which is where a man either rapes or somehow tort otherwise tortures a woman, 
at the end of the scene, she's pulling him close. Dr. Zhivago, Ev Grab starts to rape Lara, and at the beginning of the beginning of the beginning of the scene, she's pushing him away. By the end of the scene, she's pulling him close. Mm -hmm. Now contrast that with Deliverance, where a man gets raped at the rape, at the rape. At the end of the scene is Ned Beatty pulling the guy close and saying, I love you. V for Vendetta. He kidnaps her, he kidnaps her, he puts her in solitary confinement, tortures her, and then the first thing she says when she comes out is, I love you. That's bullshit. Yeah. And my point is, so we need to be telling different stories. We need to be telling all the fundamental, okay, I think there are, there are many problems we face right now. One is male supremacism, obviously. One is white supremacism, obviously. And another one that we don't talk about at all is human supremacism. And the notion that humans are more important or more intelligent or more anything than hammerhead sharks or coho salmon or prairie dogs um, that they have more rights to rights to rights to rights to live, to live than those others. And um, so we need to be telling stories that don't have the landscape just as backdrop. But the landscape is actually a character because the landscape is alive. The Tala lived here for 12,500 years and years and years. Fundamental difference between Western and indigenous ways of being is that even the most open minded Westerners still perceive the, perceive the, perceive the, perceive the, perceive the world as consisting of resources. And <coughs> non-humans speak to us. I, I, we desperately need to be telling these different stories. And, and also, I remember talking about this one time, that the, um, we were trying to figure out who were some mass, who were some male writers, male feminist fiction writers. And we came up with like Thomas Hardy, uh, Henry Gibson, uh, 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 remember. Um, so we came up with some from the 1880s, 1890s, and then, okay, 1940s, 1950s. It just dropped off the edge. It was nothing. Yeah, I'm trying to think. think. We, got, <laughs> like, it was all we got Stephen King with, uh, with uh, Doris Claiborne. Doris Claiborne. Uh, was, but, 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 uh, so we need those stories. Well, now Stick Larson. Yeah. Thank you. I forgot about him. <laughs> great books. Anyway, um, but at the same time, we have to dismantle, and I don't see how I don't see a problem with that. I think we can do it at the same time. Um, any resistance movement, you're, you know, you're the Irish. Um, you know, they were fighting the British at the same time. They're, they're, they're having a renaissance sense of Irish culture. And the world really does want to be repaired. I mean, if you look at civilization, it's been ten thousand years. It's destroy, destroy, destroy. And what we've got, what we've got to do is reverse that process and just repair, repair, repair. And really, that just means get out of the way because the world will do that work for us. I mean, the, be the beavers are taking down the canals now in at Chernobyl. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know. All it took was the people going away, and all, all, all. The, and I shouldn't say all people because there's still a few people there who stayed in Chernobyl and would not leave were the old women. And they're not hurting anybody. <laughs> yeah. um, but except for that, you know, the industrial humans went away, and so now you have multiple packs of wolves, plural packs of wolves, of wolves, of wolves, Lots, which, yeah, which tells lot. you, which tells you, you know, how much food there is there for them to eat, because they're, you know, the apex predators. So that means there's food. The beavers are back. They're destroying the canals. There's all kinds of rare birds now that haven't been seen there for, you know, 100 years, 100 years. Um, and you know, Derek makes the point that what this means is that, um, you know, like even on the worst possible day you can imagine of a, a nuclear meltdown, um, that's actually better for the planet than the everyday workings of, workings of, workings of industrial civilization. Um, so, you know, you can take that one home. But <laughs> <laughs> if we were to repair even 75% of the world's trashed out prairies, which have been destroyed by agriculture, let's be very clear what's happened to that land, but even 75% of those, if we could restore them to the perennial polycultures, to, to the grasses that would like to be there and the ruminants that belong there, they could all come home. Um, within t within t 12 years, we could sequester all the carbon that's been released since the beginning of the industrial age. Carbon would drop to 333 parts per million, which is well below that 350, 350 you know, cutoff mark. Um, I don't know why we're not talking about this. We should be repairing the <coughs> planet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no groovy green solution that involves, you know, God knows what kind of crazy toxic substances. Or, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, what they do to make... You know, you know, the windmills and the solar panels, I mean, they're creating toxic lakes in China. Okay, and people need to understand this. You know, it's just as horrible as the tar sands and the mountaintop removal. It's just happening in China, not here. Okay, so there isn't like a green groovy way out of this. We can't. Yes, we can't. Yes. We cannot sustain this way of his way of his life. The planet can't do it. Okay, but if we were to repair what we've destroyed over the last ten thousand years, then yes, uh, it's not too late. Just leave it all